Hello and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. Is the Libertarian Party going to save our political system? No, they're not. The Libertarian Party pretty much sucks. So I'm always uh, amazed every four years when libertarians and liberty lovers and limited government types put their hopes that somehow the party is going to uh, metamorphosize and turn into something that will actually have an impact on our political system. Um, they're not organized enough. They don't know what they are. Uh, they are weak and spineless and the systems are stupid. Uh, they, they focus on the wrong things and that's why libertarianism is awesome. Libertarianism will save the world. Uh, people taking responsibility for their own actions, people living their own lives uh, without the intrusion of too much government that will make everything better because from liberty springs capitalism and creativity and those things hand in hand will absolutely save the planet um and it, liberty means wanting and expecting liberty for other people and demanding more of them as individuals not as wards of the state and not expecting that the state is going to solve all of our problems. That's not what the Libertarian Party is. So here we are in the fallout of uh, the convention. The nominee is Chase Oliver, very nice guy. Uh, he certainly is a libertarian. He uh, was the disruptor in the Georgia Senate race and uh, took enough votes away from the Republican that Raphael Warnock is the official United States Senator from Georgia. He also uh, ran for Congress in, in Georgia. And it, he's, you know, sweet guy. But there has been a civil war brewing for a few years now within the Libertarian Party um, because the party is weak and doesn't know what it wants to do. So the Mises Caucus, uh, that includes several friends of mine and people that I have a great deal of respect for, I don't necessarily agree with them on everything. And I don't think you have to. I don't think we have to all land under one umbrella or one party mantle or one caucus or another. That's what it means to be an individual. And I guess the thing that surprises me is people expected different results. They expected different outcomes. But at the Libertarian Convention, every four years, none of the above always wins. And that's the candidate that they should run. Because if they ran none of the above in every state, none of the above would win in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Nevada and Michigan and every other swing state, Florida, Virginia, you name it, none of the above would win um, because we have gotten so stuck in the idea of red versus blue and one versus the other. And government has gotten so big and so powerful and the power is worth so much money that it behooves two parties to only have two parties. So they squash everyone else. Uh, you have to be smarter. You have to be nimble. You have to be better organized. You have to work from the ground up in a third party system. And the Libertarian Party never does that. That's why I always tell people I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party. I am a libertarian. I'm very proud to be a libertarian, even though it means something different. And every few years, someone tries to co-opt the meaning of the term libertarian. Uh, for me, it is synonymous with liberty and being liberty minded. There are plenty of Republicans and a few Democrats who are also very libertarian in their heart. And it's interesting. I was on Gutfeld the other night with Charlemagne the God. Um, he did not emerge with a ton of great reviews on X, formerly known as Twitter, but he brought up a really good point, and that is if we focused more on issues than individuals, we would get much further in this country. And when I talk to people, um, and you know, maybe it's my personal biases, maybe it's the way I ask questions, I oftentimes come out of conversations with people who consider themselves on a completely different part of the political spectrum, uh, and, and we emerge with a lot of common ground. Does that mean we all have to be moderates? No, but it does mean that we have much more in common than the two-party system would dictate. And when you've got weak and feckless third parties like a Libertarian Party, you're never going to shake that stranglehold. Uh, RFK Jr., and I've talked about this a lot, 
he has reached a number of peoples because he's getting a little bit better than some of these other candidates at not name calling and finding the commonalities, even though he has some bat poop crazy ideas and has for a long time. And those, you know, will come back to bite him and haunt him, but he's not really a viable candidate. So it, it doesn't truly matter, even though his family says that they would never vote for him for president, which I think is really funny. It's almost reason enough to vote for him if it would make people mad uh, who were snooty establishmentarianism. Uh, establishmentarians like a lot of people in his family. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. So if voting for RFK Jr. would make them mad. I might do it. At this point, that's not where I'm leaning. I don't know who I'm going to vote for at this point. I don't know that anyone and certainly no one party uh, has earned my vote as long as people talk about the issues that matter to me, which are the ones that if we are talking about common ground, matter to everyone. And that is we are overtaxed. Government is too intrusive. Uh, there is an imbalance of power locally and at the federal level. And we have the tools as individuals taken away from us more than we are empowered. And you have entire groups who are so easily demonized and others who are dumb enough to go along with that sheep mentality. Um, it takes a lot more effort to be a voter who votes on issues as an individual than it does to blindly follow a candidate or a party. But with Charlemagne, I agree on that. And he and I have talked about wanting better schools and wanting the ability to protect ourselves. Um, he hates Donald Trump, but he also is no fan of Joe Biden, which is what so many people feel right now. And that's what people are expressing all over the place. Um, they're also very surprised that the Biden administration isn't doing more to acknowledge that people are still hurting from inflation. And as I've also explained, it's not just the prices right now. It's what the inflationary state did to people's personal budgets. And for a lot of people, um, you know, who could not renegotiate their rent or people who were not in a position to get another job or to get a pay raise, a lot of people were living on credit. And so the problem that people are feeling right now, and they will for some time, is they are paying off their debt. Uh, they are paying the bare minimum on their credit cards, which are maxed out. And we are seeing this in survey after survey across the board. So until we have less government and, you know, fewer dictates from the Fed, which, you know, as a libertarian, hashtag and the Fed, why wouldn't we? There are a million reasons we should. Uh, it would certainly make our lives better right now and stop creating these uh, separate inflationary bubbles in places like Wall Street. But until we get there, uh, you just, as a person, as a voter, as an individual, as an individualist, you have to figure out what's best for you. And that's the bottom line. Um, if you are a member of the Libertarian Party and you're happy with the status quo, you're happy with the outcome of the Civil War, well, good for you. Uh, they invited the whole thing. I think their leadership sucks. Um, I wish Chase Oliver the absolute best. I hope at some point any, literally any other person gets on the debate stage. I, if it's Charlemagne the God, fine. Uh, anyone who can focus on things that will really impact people's lives and not uh, the laundry list of party tackle that, uh, you know, Trump and Biden are going to throw at each other and to the voting masses just in a few swing states, just among a few independent voters in order to latch on to more power to make government bigger and more intrusive because regardless of how you feel about Donald Trump personally, he still is going to do that. He, he is not going to uh, decrease the size of the federal government. I do like that he got rid of some of the bureaucracy and some of the red tape. Um, we'll see what happens with the outcome of all of his legal troubles. We'll see if Joe Biden can physically make it, not only to November, but to the convention in August in Chicago. That in and of itself is going to be a major crap show, which it would have been nice if the Libertarian Party 
could have made itself whole and uh, figured out a better system that would have produced the best candidate because I have never seen a time, and I, I feel like this every four years, but I've never seen a time where people are more receptive to cohesive, rational ideas outside of the two-party system. I'm still libertarian. I'm just a mildly displeased one, always looking for hope and a better answer. And uh, damn Skippy, I'm going to find it. This has been Kennedy Saves the World. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network. 